Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and here are some brothers' best friend romances. I know this is like a comfort trope for a lot of people. It is for me. I love a good brother's best friend romance. I feel like it also works really well in TV shows. <laughs> I love those in TV shows as well. Um, but yeah, here are 10 recommendations, 10 books about a heroine falling in love with her brother's best friend. I also have one previous recommendation video with this trope. I'll leave it down below if you want even more recommendations. Everyone knows this one. This is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. This one's about Alex and Ava. So Ava is a college student and the house that her and her girlfriends live in is actually next door to a house that her brother owns. Her brother like keeps an eye on her all the time. Her brother actually has to go overseas for a specific reason. And he tells his best friend Alex to keep watch over Ava while he's gone. So he ends up moving into her brother's house next door and keeping an eye on her as close as possible. They don't really enjoy Toe's company to say the least. Um, Ava finds Alex to be way too grumpy, way too like frozen, stoic. Alex thinks that Ava's like too much, okay? <laughs> but Ava's determined to kind of get under Alex's skin and see what makes him tick. So it's their romance. It's her brother's best friend. It's a sort of a series that is very well known here on booktube, booktalk, bookstagram, like everywhere. Um, I've only read the first two, but I need to continue on with the rest. But I feel like everyone knows about this brother's best friend romance. Next is Falling Embers by Katherine Cowles. This is book number two in her Tattered and Torn series, which is a small town, kind of like romantic suspense series. This one's about Calder and Hadley. Calder is a few years older than Hadley. He is the age, same age as her older brother. Calder is also a single father. He's the single dad to two human girls who absolutely love Hadley. Anyway, so this book starts out with Hadley kind of being in like a rough patch in her life and Calder introduces her to like kind of like BMX biking. I think that's what it's called. She gets such a thrill out of it and that becomes like her new personality, her new life. And he's kind of like, oh no, I just opened up a can of worms. I can't shut. <laughs> so um, that's like her new thing now. That's what she loves to do, her passion in life. There is a forbidden element because he is significantly older than her. That is his best friend's little sister. So he's like burying his feelings for those reasons throughout this book. Next is Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. So our heroine in here is this online public speaker and she's been getting these horrible threats from somebody and she tells her brother's best friend, the hero, because the brother's not around. I don't know where he is, but he's not around. And so the only one that can help her, person that can help her is her brother's best friend. And they've been pining after each other for years, but he never wants to cross that line because she is significantly younger than him and that's his brother's best friend and he like swore he would never do that to his best friend. Lines are crossed. Lines are definitely crossed. Like they cannot help themselves. So he has kind of like become her bodyguard in a sense, her protector in a sense to figure out who this guy is that is stalking her and like leaving all these weird notes and threatening threatening letters. This book has great like forced proximity because he like stays in the apartment with her and like but sleeps on the couch. But even with him sleeping on the couch, like the forced proximity element, <gasps> So good. Next, I have Rain Me In by Kayla Gross. This is about Blake and Gavin. So Blake is our heroine in here and she ends up going back to her small town after living away for a few years after her brother passed away. Her brother passed away um, during a horse riding accident and she hasn't really been on the back of a horse since then. It's very traumatic for her. When she moves back, she ends up, her dad ends up convincing her to go to the country western bar in town and she bumps into Gavin there who is her brother who is not with them anymore, but is his best friend. That was his best friend growing up. And Gavin had the hugest crush on Blake growing up. And he is finally like, I'm in, this woman's gonna be mine now. Like I am going, going to get her. So he decides to try to impress her and get to know her more. But the first night that she goes to that bar, he messes up. Like he kind of like peer pressures her to ride the mechanical bull. He doesn't know that she has PTSD with getting on like things that feel like a horse, that are a horse, that feel like a horse. Um, and so she's very pissed at him and he grovels his butt off to be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know about this. Like, let me make it up to you, please go out with me. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this one. There's an interesting dynamic in here too because her brother is no longer with them anymore, but that's still his best friend. So they have these like wonderful memories the two of them can connect over when it comes to her brother. Next is Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. This is, it looks like a historical romance, but it's not. You see, he's got tattoos and stuff. It takes place in present time. These two are kind of like cosplaying, dressing up as uh, Jane Austen characters because there's this Jane Austen festival that the heroine in here is in charge of and no one is there to play Lydia and 
Wickham. And so she decides to play Lydia and her brother's <laughs> best friend plays Wickham. And the two of them have been having these pent up feelings for each other for quite a while. He's a hockey player, by the way, and she is going through an endometriosis diagnosis. So I loved that representation in here. With this like cosplaying, like reenactment of Pride and Prejudice throughout this fair, the two of them like finally get to like kind of like be close proximity with one another, be touchy feely, um, but they've never crossed that line. First of all, she doesn't think that he would ever feel that way about her. And he thinks that he would definitely like ruin his relationship with his best friend, but things happen. If Only You by Chloe Lisa, another hockey player hero, by the way. This is about Seb, Sebastian, and Ziggy. Ziggy in here is the baby of the Bergman family, and she's really sick of that title, and kind of like the world sees her as that. She's a professional soccer player. She kind of wants a more like rougher, more serious nature to her image. Um, so she decides to approach Sebastian, who is her brother, Ren's best friend, who's on the same hockey team as her brother, and is like, can we be fake friends? So like the media can like see that I'm with kind of like a bad boy, if you will, and it'll like roughen up my image a little bit. And Sebastian agrees for a specific reason. You'll figure out why when you read the book. But yeah, they become like fake friends. They go out in public like together and pretend to be friends, but it turns into a real friendship and it develops into more into love. There's awesome representation in here. Ziggy is autistic and um, Sebastian is going through a celiac disease diagnosis. I have celiac disease, so I really loved that representation. But this one is really interesting too, because um, I don't think the reason why like they're like not together isn't has nothing to do with her brother. So I would love to that. They cannot care less about what Ren thinks about them and their relationship. So I loved that aspect of here. They're like, we don't care. If you want a novella, I have Plain Love by Avery Kingston. This is about Lainey and Xavier. So they end up actually being on the same airplane. I think they're going to Hawaii. I don't know where they're going. They're going somewhere for a destination wedding. It's to Lainey's brother's wedding. They don't know each other. They don't know they're going to the same wedding. They don't know they're going to the same place. Okay. Um, but he actually, Xavier gets on the plane before Lainey. He's a wheelchair user. And so he needs kind of assistance getting on the plane and he's sitting in the chair and he will not like stand up to let her in the aisle and Lainey's a little bit huffed about that <laughs> and a little bit pissed off because she's like oh this guy's kind of rude she doesn't know that he's a wheelchair user he doesn't tell her he's like oh yeah I can't stand up for you because I can't walk like no he's not gonna say that the two of them really connect on this plane ride though when they're sitting next to each other and they bump into each other again at the wedding when she realizes oh my gosh this is my brother's best man like what? And they have this amazing connection on the plane together. It leads to something more, obviously. It's a fun, quick, short read with great disability rep. Another novella that I have is Clockwork by Cassie Mint. Our heroine in here is going to be staying with um, her brother's best friend for a little bit, who is like a clockwork maker, like a clock maker. Like, like, I don't really know how to describe it. He like fixes and makes clocks. And she is going to like, kind of like be his apprentice for the time being, can be his like live-in assistant. And um, I think one of the things that her brother like threatens him with when he leaves to drop, like when he drops her off and leaves, like, don't you fall in love with my sister. But uh, they fall for each other. It's a short, like this one's very sweet, a very short, sweet, read. If you want a fantasy-esque like mythological one, I have For the Love of the Gods by Rory L. Scott. This series is about Greek and Roman gods like and their fated mates. So Dominic Pluto and Rose Hades are rulers of the underworld and have been fated to be together by the fates. So they get married and unite their households even though they hate each other. Dominic is certain that Rose is responsible for his best friend's death who is Rose's brother when she's not, you're trying to figure out what happened to her brother throughout the whole book. So these two all powerful gods absolutely hate each other, are forced to get married, like what's gonna happen with them and their people. He hates her though, because he's like very certain, like she is responsible for my best friend's death, which I don't know, I don't think she was. But if you love like Greek and Roman mythology, I really recommend this one is very unique, super interesting. And the last one that I have is a historical, this is Goddess of the Hunt by Tessa Dare, the first book in her Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy. <laughs> I've only read this one in the um, trilogy. I want to read more because I want to say that I've read all of Tessa Dare's backlist. So our heroine in here is determined to find a husband and she is certain that this one guy, she's in love with him. She is certain of it. 
um, but she tasked her brother's best friend, Jeremy, to kind of make that guy jealous, I think, and to learn like seductive lessons like from him. But I think they get in a compromising position because of all that. And they actually do have to get married to one another. So it's very complicated, but it's also very funny at times. This book, like I do remember laughing a lot throughout it. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some brother's best friend romances. That is a little bit like a forbidden element to you. If you like forbidden romances, brother's best friend is a great trope to dip your toe in. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cow emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.